Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another weekly recap. Now, today is the release day for Guardians of the Rift, the new runecrafting minigame. Now, for the most part, it has been released in a very similar state to the previous poll blog, but there are a few notable changes about it, which we're going to be having a look at today. On top of that, there's also some changes from poll number 76, some significant changes to the new PvP rewards, and a few pretty significant changes to some game mechanics. As always, I'm going to be covering that and anything else interesting in the old school RuneScape community this week. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. Alright, so the Guardians of the Rift update came out this morning at 4.30 a.m., my time anyway. And as of now, which is a few hours later, the game worlds are offline. Now, unfortunately, a severe bug was discovered uh, that was caused by the new update, and they are currently doing a rollback on the server to be somewhere just right before when the update dropped. So what exactly happened? Well, server rollbacks are usually only done when there is a severe bug discovered, and unfortunately, there was. For some reason, after today's update, if somebody died and had untradables on them, people were able to pick them up. For example, if you died killing a God Wars dungeon boss, someone could go pick up your Inferno Cave, even though they had never earned it before. Low combat level accounts could go pick up Inferno Caves, Fire Caves, Ava's Assemblers, you know, whatever. Any untradable item essentially could be transferred over to another account, which is a massive game breaking integrity issue and that's why they have to do a server rollback. As of right now when I'm recording it, there's still no news on what the ETA is going to be. One thing's for sure though is that I'm going to have to do the Temple of the Eye quest again. We already finished it, hopped into the Guardians of the Rift, and well, we're going to have to do that again I suppose. Now with today's update, the main addition is Guardians of the Rift. Now we detailed it a bit already, but they have actually made a few changes to it, so we're going to go ahead and detail those. Now to start with here, to gain access to the Guardians of the Rift, the new minigame, you actually have to do a quest, which is Temple of the Eye. The quest is pretty easy, will take you around 20 or 25 minutes, and will give you access to the new minigame. The basics of the minigame are pretty simple. In the center of the map, there is a giant Rift Guardian, and you have to defend it from an assault of Abyssal Creatures. Kind of like a tower defense or something. Now there's three things you can do. First up, you can power up the Rift Guardian in the center. That's how you are literally going to win the minigame. And the other two things involve protecting him. You can either make shield barriers in the front that will physically just block damage from the abyssal creatures, and you can also make these offensive rift guardian things that will actually go ahead and damage the oncoming abyssal creatures, which will also help defend the guardian. Now, when they originally proposed the minigame, you were actually going to need to require your own pure essence to participate, uh, which they liked the idea in theory, but in practice, it was just a bit too clunky and didn't end up working. So instead, there's not going to be a bank in there, but there will be a deposit box, which will have a quick option to deposit all your runes. Now, the proposed XP rate is currently somewhere between 20,000 and 60,000 experience per hour. That is, of course, only on paper. Without more testing, we don't know if it's going to be higher or lower. And you're also going to be earning around 4 or 500k per hour GP. Now, with any new content, there is, of course, some new rewards, and some of them were changed marginally as well since the last poll blog. Now for completing the minigame, you will have a rare chance of getting a few different items. You can get an Abyssal Needle, which will allow you to create the Colossal Pouch, which will have a capacity of 40. There will be a new pet, the Abyssal Protector, and there's also a few Talismans and Recolors you can get rarely just by completing the minigame. However, on top of that, you also slowly accrue currency, which you can go ahead and spend in the reward shop. The new reward shop will have a bunch of different things, including talismans, most notably a new blood talisman, which you'll of course need to access the blood altar. Now another kind of significant change is the new blood altar, the true blood altar in Mauritania, is actually going to be accessible via the abyss. It's still going to be slower than having the highest level agility shortcut to get there, but it will be the next quickest way to access the new altar. One of the premier items is the new runecrafting skilling outfit called the Raiments of the Eye. Now the skilling outfit is kind of interesting because each piece will grant the wearer 10% more runes while runecrafting, up to a maximum of 60%. So a significant amount more runes you're going to get for having the outfit. No more experience though, which is quite different than most other skilling outfits. Uh, you're also able to buy the Ring of Elements, which when charged will allow you to teleport to the four basic elemental altars, being fire, water, air, and earth. And you can also get the Abyssal Lantern, which is going to be an offhand item that you will mainly use in the Temple of the Eye itself, 
When lit, it will give you a ton of different benefits, including getting more blood runes when you craft them, getting more reward points, giving more talismans, stuff like that. Just really useful buffs to the minigame. Now they did make a quick change to the lantern, now there's no timer on it, it will now remain lit as long as you want until you extinguish it, so just a bit easier to use. And finally, you'll be able to purchase an item, the Guardians of the Eye, which will allow you to transmog an existing Rift Guardian pet. So there's a new pet and a transmog for an existing pet. Kind of cool to have them both, although what is going on with the new pet? Kind of weird. Okay, so beyond the Guardians of the Rift, there's actually quite a few other changes in today's update. First up here, we have a few things from poll number 76, mainly the quest list changes. So as of today's game update, you will now be able to sort your quest list in a bunch of different ways. So beyond the normal way they're sorted, you can sort them based on status, uh, difficulty, the length of the quest, uh, based on the storyline, so I guess like more Tanya, desert storyline, stuff like that. You can sort it based on the start location, the recommended combat level, when it was released. Alphabetically, there's just a ton of things here, so the quest interface is just a lot better now. There's also new filters that have been added as well, which will allow you to filter out mini quests, quests that you don't have the requirements for, that's awesome, and also quests that you don't have the recommended levels for. So that's simply just one change from Pole 76, there are a bunch more to come, but, but a few very useful features. Now last week, beta worlds were added for players to test out the new PvP arena rewards. Now there's been a few changes to some of them based on some feedback that's already been received. Now the main changes are happening to the Void-like set. Now the first thing they're going to be doing is removing the damage reduction effect entirely from all three headgear sets. Now to begin with here, the melee focus set, Malmas, has had its damage reduced a bit and instead they've opted to increase its accuracy. With the original proposal, the melee max hit were so high that it could actually lead to a situation where it was possible to one hit someone with the right RNG. They felt like that was too strong so they decided to tone it back a bit and focus more on accuracy to make the set more consistent. So now the highest level helm will provide 30% melee accuracy and plus 5% melee damage, so a fairly significant change. Now Psyche's headgear, the mage equivalent, has had a significant buff as they felt that it was not accurate enough. So now the highest level helm has had its magic attack bonus increased to 118. Seems like that might be a typo, but... I suppose I don't understand the inner workings of PvP that much, and will now provide a 60% magic accuracy and 5% magic damage bonus. And finally, the range set has had its defenses decreased, and will now provide up to 25% range accuracy and 12.5% range damage, so kind of just a full across the board rebalance of the entire Void-like set. So if you want to try out the new changed items, they are now currently live on the beta worlds. Now today we've also received a pretty fundamental change to how death piles work in old school RuneScape. Now these changes have been in the works for a while, and while they are primarily meant to affect Ultimate Iron Man, everyone will be affected to some degree. So as of today, the game will now recognize death pile items as part of your own player save rather than the world save. This pretty much means that when you have items on the ground that are visible only to you, such as untradeables, it will be saved when you log off and will reappear when you log back on. The time that they stay on the ground for is the same, but critically the timer will pause while you're offline. So this is most likely, in my opinion, the update that caused all the issues today. It would make the most sense that this would cause somehow untradeables to be viewable for everybody. So obviously some part of this update got scuffed a bit, and that's why the servers are down. Now besides Ultimate Iron Man, all account types will notice that if they have the settings enable which drop food and potions, that pile will also benefit from pause despawn timers, so your supplies will stay on the ground even if you log off and come back days later. This will also have future potential benefits when new content comes out. For example, when Next came out, items were simply just getting deleted off the ground because the server couldn't handle it all, but as items would now be saved to your player, this issue would not come up again. So overall, a really nice change. Granted, it is probably causing a rollback, but what are you going to do? There's a pretty big update today, so I will be patient. So that is pretty much it for today's game update. Now, as soon as the game worlds come online, I'll be hopping into Guardians of the Rift. So stay tuned for that video. It was going to be a day one video, but uh, well, now it might be day two at this point. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you then. Now before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. 
Thank you so much to Nello, Aleandra, The Hybrid, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed to the Dragon Tier. Really, I appreciate it so much. Also, a giant thank you to Kaitin987, Mexos, Base Titch, MDM001, and YoYoSub89 for being subscribed to the Runite Tier. Appreciate you guys as well. As always, if anyone's looking for a direct way to support me, YouTube membership is the best way to do so. You'll get immortalized in all of my future videos, you can get a custom role on my Discord server, and you'll even know when all my videos are coming out. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.